Hi friend, welcome to Magical Quilting May. I'm Pat Sloan and this is challenge number 23. <laughs> I thought I had it memorized and I had a look. That's, my printer needs to have darker numbers or bigger numbers on these calendars for me. <laughs> okay, so we're on number 23. Let's do the challenge first. Then we got a bunch of other stuff to talk about here on Saturday. Uh, challenge is tidy up. And I have a little bit of a twist. Not only do I want you to do something to tidy up, because yes, I think a regular reminder several times during the month is good because we get lax and we don't do it. But really I'm more curious today about a specific time and place when you tidy up. And that's at the end of a project. When you finish a project, do you then right away tidy everything up from it? You know, like disperse all the fabrics back into your collection, put it where they are, like cut up your scraps, you know, put the pattern away um, and make the binding. Cause if you haven't quilted it yet, or you're, you know, it's not going to get quilted for a while, you know, put the binding where you can put it, make the label. Um, do you do a, a happy dance? <laughs> like it's done. Yay. <laughs> Something like that. What is your, um, process what is your ritual what is the thing that you do when you finish a project you know how do you wrap it up tidy up after a project's over okay so for me uh, i'm not so good at that i tend to just move on to the next thing and i don't really celebrate the end of it i don't really often do enough of a wrap up of it occasionally i do because if it's work things you know i have to get it organized and the space that it was using back so another project can go in there but sometimes that can take a weeks before I actually get around to doing that it might the, the leftover stuff that I didn't use might just sit in its bin until I'm at the point where I'm like you know I really need that bin for a current project not something that's completed and, and not being worked on anymore it's taking up valuable space I don't have a lot of space to be wasting it on something I'm not I'm done with but I think the biggest thing is I don't celebrate that for me enough I don't like have this sort of like uh, a nice sigh of relief like you know like enjoy like look at it and say oh it's done it's great like often I'm finishing something and shoving it out the door it has to go someplace um, th does that happen to you like you're just at the last minute finishing it so you can give it to somebody you know maybe you take a photo of it but I would really like to know what your process is and, and if we don't have a process if you're like me raise your hand like you don't really have a good process for when it's done let's think up some let's Let's start to celebrate those finishes a little bit more boldly, a little bit with a bit more excitement and fanfare. It's like, we're done. It's a big project. It's done. Sometimes our joy is actually just seeing it. You could just snuggle under it or hang it up or give it, uh, however that ends up. Okay. Two main things I want to talk about. We'll see what else I can get to. Uh, I want to show you the blue, some of the blue colorway again from my Morris Park fabric line that will be coming out in October to your store. So you need to ask your stores to order it now so that you will have it. So let's, let's take a look. Uh, come down here. Here we go. So I brought over the, the blue colorway. We'll just zoom in a little bit here here we go so this piece here really started the whole collection for me when this drawing was getting finalized i was like yes this this is really what it's all about morrison park for my neighborhood every neighborhood should have a park and that is morrison park for pat sloan's neighborhood and the park has to have flowers and meadows and forest areas and ponds and, you know, park benches and all those great things. So this started it all. It's kind of like the midnight version. And then I've got, let's see, I've got the light, light blue background version of that, which I love. In, in Morrison Park, I kept many of the prints more tonal. You don't have like a whole riot of colors. They're much uh, like tighter in the colorway. So this is mostly shades of blue and white and little pops of red. And then the companion prints are for the blues are all pretty much blue and white. So we've got the paisley, which has florals in it. 
And I just love how that turned out. We've got like paisleys with dots and paisleys with little um, scalloped edges and paisleys with little teardrops on the, on the, on the outside. And even the leaves have like great little emphasis of like a, pa a paisley shape, whereas, you know, there's one, it's like a curve out. It looks like a little paisley, mini paisley. I love the dots, gotta have some dots. And this one has a little stripe behind it. Greg says it looks a little bit like, uh, f like, like what corduroy might feel like for having that dot. I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's always interesting to hear what somebody else sees when they look at your fabric. Then a little scatter print has a tiny little bit of yellow in it. And I just love how this looks in a quilt. It's going to be so great as a companion print. The stripe is all different shades of blue on cream so that when you get it, when you cut it from a distance, it reads light blue, which I just love that effect. We've got the geometric now. And this is a geometric where the base of it's blue and on the red, the geometric, the base, which would be like, see where the, the circle is or the, the square rather, that's um, white. So this is the, the blue base. And then a little companion print. These are generally called like a ditzy print. A ditzy print, I think is just a, a, um, a textile term where it's a small, a small print that's usually done in repeat like this is versus scattered like uh, where, well, the pa paisley is scattered, but so is this. This would be a scattered print and this would be a uniform print. So there we go. Those are my Morrison Park and they will be in the stores in uh, October, probably like oh, first week in October. It might be sooner, but let's just say first week in October. And so ask your favorite quilt shop to order it from Banner Text so that it'll be there for you when it comes out. Yes, so excited. And down below I have a link to the page, my fabric page, where I'm going to be starting to put pictures of the fabrics close up. I've got pictures of some of the quilts in digital. Uh, I actually got my rolls of fabric. I'll bring one over here for one of the videos soon. I'll bring a whole roll of you know, they came right from the factory to me. So that's pretty cool. Got them on the rolls rather than bolts like you see. It's kind of like what you might find clothing fabric on, but it's, you know, so there's no fold in the middle on mine. Yay, <laughs> that's a bonus. But they are a little hard to, <laughs> they're big. So it's hard to roll out on the table. It's good I got a big table. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna talk a little bit about is our June challenge. So the underlying theme for June is going to be free motion quilting with a little bit of walking foot quilting. So basically quilt your own quilt. So the June calendar, when I put it up, which will be next week, next week, before June 1st, I don't know what day, a couple days before, hopefully, I have to get it laid out, you know, so I can put all the, all the topics. But the underlying theme is like, at least every day I will talk about being sure that you are quilting. You'll either have an assignment, I'll show you something, um, you'll do something. There's every day we're going to be doing something with free motion quilting. Now I know uh, that because people can't get things in, shipping can't happen like it normally does. A lot of places are waiting for my books to restock. They, you know, they put their orders in, but they're waiting for the restock. So once it comes, it comes. You know, um, I'll be referencing pages in here where I have photo step outs of things and then patterns and stuff. So like here is, you know, for how the book looks like with photo step outs in it. And I'll be referencing that. But the the day to day is uh, for June will be some sort of assignment for free motion quilting. And so this will be really fun. Uh, you'll be able to every day has something to focus on something you have to do. Uh, I had a question about what does the foot look like for free motion quilting? And so this is this is a free motion quilting foot. I'll just put it down here. It'd be a little easier on the white. Here we go. Whoops. So let's zoom in. This is what the foot is. Now this is an open toe version. Yours might be closed. It might be a circle. So if it's a circle, it's the same deal, but this moves. Um, whoops. See, that that's upside down, but 
there. Let's see if I can get it angled. There we go. This is going to be how it kind of works. And when you put it, the your pressure foot down, it doesn't go right on the table like this. It has to have room underneath it so that the quilt sandwich can go in there. So it will be where you can move the sandwich like that underneath the foot. If for some reason you put your foot down and you know you can't move very well or you struggle, you pull, there's something wrong. Either this guy wasn't put on right or for some reason he is not the right foot for your machine. And that happens. So you want to be sure that you put the presser foot down and you can easily move this underneath very easily. There should be no dragging or pulling of it. So that's something that you can test right now to be sure that your foot is working properly, you know, so that you have it on the machine properly and that, uh, you know how to assemble it, you know, you know that it can move, you know that this stuff can shift because you don't want to get started with everything. You still have a couple of days. If it's not working, you can contact your dealer and you can try to find out what's going on or you could come online to the I Quilt Along with Pass Loan group and ask there to find out what's going on. You know, maybe somebody has the same machine. They can say, oh yeah, that's happened to me, you know, that kind of a thing. So you want to test that out. So put your walking foot on, I mean, your free motion quilt, quilting foot on today and then just take a little, take a quilt and stick it under there and be sure you can move it and it doesn't drag with the presser foot down. Okay, you're also, uh, we're working with panels. That's the goal for June is working with panels. So up on my wall back here, I found this sunflower panel. Isn't that fabulous? I've linked it down below. So down below is, um, uh, the link right to where you can get that sunflower panel. There also, also the Hoffman Dream is what's next to that. And those come in, I'll link that to that too. But those come in a lot of different colors so that if you have a particular color scheme uh, or like a particular color, you can get what suits you. And a lot of people like those, particularly if they've already done a bit of free motion quilting, because what you're going to do then is use each petal in that to do different things. So you can practice different things. And the whole, the overall look then is fabulous with all those different practice things in it. So those are some panels that you can pick up. Plus I'll have the link to all the panels at the two sites where I have a lot of panels. Um, Fat Quarter Shop and Fabric.com so that you can uh, pick what, what works for you. We still, you know, if for some reason your panel doesn't come by the 1st of June, uh, you can start practicing just on fabric, but it's really nice to have a panel because it gives you something to, to look at. Also, if you want to make your panel bigger, now's the time to do that. Okay, so there we go. We are all set. Tell me what your what you do after you t after you finish a big project, how you tidy up after a big project. That's our challenge for today. And I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being part of my community and part of my daily challenges. Thank you for watching every single day. If you missed any, you can go here to YouTube and catch them. So I'm Pat Sloan. Mwah. I love you. I will see you online.